What's going on everybody? Gem Mint back again with another Omnibus review. We got in an early copy of The Ultimate Marvel by Jonathan Hickman. And you gotta give it to Marvel, man. Their planning department is on point. You have the new Ultimate Comics universe kicking off with Hickman's Spider-Man and what drops right around the same time is this Omnibus collecting Hickman's stuff from the original Ultimate Marvel universe. I took the time to read this thing front to back. We're gonna do a review of the Omnibus, what it collects, go over the story and more. If you're looking to pick up this book or any Omnibus in the States, you gotta check out organicpricebooks.com. Bomb proof packaging, fast shipping. You can pre-order Omnibus so you're not like how I used to be back in the day trying to click and hurry up at the day of release. And if you're overseas, you can check out comicsbugle.com. Same thing, they got Hulk proof packaging, they got pre-order options, and there's a setup to where you can pre-order now, but you don't pay until it's ready to ship. They throw in gifts with every purchase. They have eco-friendly packaging. There are no taxes, import fees, and free shipping if you're in the EU, and they have customer service guaranteed to respond to you within 24 hours. You can save $2 on both sites by using code GEMMINT at checkout. So organic price books if you're in the States, Comics Bugle if you're overseas. And with that being said, let's jump into this Omni. All right, so this book comes out on March 19th. This is the standard edition with artwork by Carrie Andrews. There is a DM variant with artwork by Oliver Coipel. It's uh, a kind of a thinner book, only 560 pages, and it has a $100 cover price. Here is the spine, Ultimate Marvel, Jonathan Hickman. In the back, we have Ultimate Thor issues one through four, Ultimate Comics Hawkeye one through four, Ultimate Comics The Ultimates one through 12, and then it has material from Ultimate Fallout two through six. So similar to the death of Ultimate Spider-Man, it doesn't contain those full issues, just the parts that are pertinent to this story. And I guess the ones that are written by Jonathan Hickman inside of the dust jacket so letting us know where we're at in the ultimate universe here the thor arc the hawkeye arc and then the big kind of event which is the ultimate comics 1 through 12 a biography on the creative team jonathan hickman carlos pacheco brandon peterson asad ribic and rafa sandoval the actual book has a wraparound cover with the ultimates you've got hulk hawkeye thor and iron man all right opening the book we have some black cover pages Got that all red aesthetic, Ultimate Marvel. Here are the credits. And then we jump into Ultimate Thor. So they don't have the covers of the comics prior to the issue. They have a cover gallery in the back. The Ultimate Thor was probably my favorite out of this entire book. So we get the origin of Ultimate Thor. He is a, a god that was reborn in the body of a human. So he is not the same Thor that we know from the Marvel 616. This story introduces what you think is Baron Zemo. I'm not going to get into spoilers here, but um, a great story kind of giving us the background on this character. And it almost feels like this book is going to be an Avengers Assemble type of book, assembling the Ultimates for this Ultimates event that's uh, the later half of this book. I think that the Thor and the Hawkeye minis do a really good job of doing that. So it's got pretty good artwork throughout here. I did like the story on how Thor is not a god. He's got like the spirit of a god, but he has an enhanced suit to have these powers. Same with his hammer. So they go back and forth from the original Thor to this human version of Thor. Kind of an interesting take. It really feels different than other Thor stories that I've read. This feels very much like what they did in the Avengers movie here, but you have Donald Blake checking out Thor as he's being held captive, and he uh, believes him because he is also a god reborn, the older of the three brothers, Balder. So very cool uh, take on the Norse gods here. Of course, we've got Sam Jack, Nick Fury here, again, kind of assembling this Ultimates team. He has this threat that's incoming that he knows he'll need some firepower for. Got the tri Skellion, also used in the movies. This version of Hulk is pretty cool too, man. Gray Hulk more savage after the thor run it gives us these little stories from ultimate fallout most of us know ultimate fallout for the miles morales stuff but none of that is collected in this omnibus it just doesn't really have to do with the main story they start introducing the maker because he is the big bad of the ultimates um series here at the end of the book him with this kind of uh, almost future foundation version in the ultimate comics 
So if you check out the credits, you'll see like Ultimate Fallout 2 is just the Thor story. Ultimate Fallout 3 is uh, Tony Stark, the Karen Grant, who's like the Jean Grey of this universe, and the Hulk story. Uh, issue 4 just has the Reed Richards story. 5 has just the Nick Fury story, and same with issue 6 of Ultimate Fallout. Then we jump into the Ultimate Hawkeye, and just like that Thor miniseries, it's an introduction to this version of Hawkeye, probably your favorite version of Hawkeye. Like, similar to how he is in the movie, he has this enhanced vision, it shows how he is a, a criminal at first, and how he's kind of given this pardon to join Nick Fury's Ultimates. This is where they're introducing this serum. So they have a serum to get rid of mutants. But what the serum is also able to do is create mutants. So that's kind of the uh, foundation for the big arc at the end. Here's Clint doing just some badass Hawkeye stuff. So again, you're reading this and you're kind of feeling like this is going to be leading up to assembling the Ultimates. But that's not really how this omnibus plays out. I mean, we get the introduction of Thor and Hawkeye because that's the stuff that Hickman did. But when it comes to the main story, it feels like you're missing out on a lot of stuff that's collected in other issues. So you, you get the idea of who these characters are, but then you're just thrown into this huge event. And, and I'll talk about that more as we get into it. Again, here goes Grey Hulk. I did like this version of Bruce. Oh, yeah, then you got the Zorn stuff. So what's funny about Zorn is, like, there was two versions of Zorn in the regular continuity. So they play with that here as well. There's a Zorn with an X and a Zorn with a Z, and they are the head of the two factions. What is it? It's the Celestials and the Eternals. So you have these two different factions led by these two different Zorns. Here they are right here. So in this universe, you have the Celestials and you have the Eternals, and the humans are considered the Deviants. Here's Hawkeye. He had a big decision to make. Does he hightail it and run, or does he remain loyal to Nick Fury and grab the serum that they need? And as Hawkeye says, he don't miss. So boom, then we get into the ultimate storyline. So Hickman's Ultimates, the maker, Reed Richards, is the main antagonist here. He's grown this civilization. It kind of feels similar to... Um, Really other stuff that he's done in like his Avengers run or even in that X-Men run where you have, what is it, the Cradle or I forget what it's called, where basically time moves differently in there and they're able to uh, hyper evolve these beings. And it's kind of similar to Hickman's Avengers stuff. You have like the thinkers, you have the builders, you have these different kind of beings that were created with these specific tasks and abilities. But like I say, you kind of jump into this big war already, and it feels like there's a lot of stuff that you're missing out on that are collected in other issues within the Ultimate Universe. I'm, I'm assuming stuff that's just not written by Hickman, which is why it wasn't collected in this omnibus. Basically, this 12-issue series is just this huge all-out war, a lot of action, Nick Fury's Ultimates going up against the Maker, bringing the fight to him in that city that I mentioned where he's got all these beings that he's growing, this advanced civilization, coming full circle with stuff that they introduced in the Thor miniseries with Odin and his passing and putting his spirit into Thor so that he's always with him. All of Asgard is always with Thor. So even though he was kind of earthbound without powers, he still had all of Asgard within him. The Thor and the Hawkeye stuff was the highlight for me out of this for sure. You get good stuff with the maker. But I did, again, I, I kind of felt like a little bit lost jumping from those two minis to this main event. Like, I feel like I'm missing a lot of buildup to this. So I would love to know where that stuff is collected. Now, Spider-Woman, from what I remember in the Ultimate comics, and this is, I mean, I guess a little bit of a spoiler alert if you haven't read Ultimate Spider-Man, but this is a clone of Peter Parker, a female version, trying to recruit Captain America, but Steve Rogers, no matter what's going on, he's not going to go against the United States of America. He's not going to commit treason. So they don't get Cap in this version, or at least in this fight. Zorn with the Celestials and then Zorn with the Eternals. Two brothers, the leaders of two different people. Iconic scene right here. The Maker sizing up Hulk. Gotta love the side ribbit. See, like I'm saying, most of this 12-issue series is just a huge brawl. It doesn't lack in the action department whatsoever. And it just feels like this big, epic, world-threatening event with um, unimaginable odds that the Ultimates have to rise to the occasion. You gotta take down the Maker. He's obviously extremely smart. He's built up these advanced beings, and it just seems like, again, like it's impossible to defeat him. 
Oh, this was crazy. So you had the maker hitting the Hulk with pin particles. So you have like this almost kaiju level fight between this large robot and Hulk. All right, so after the main story it, are, are the covers. So I don't know, I thought it was kind of interesting that they put the covers at the end of the book, but here's Ultimate Thor 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, I didn't really want to make any spoilers, but Loki playing a big role with Balder and Thor during that mini. You have some variants, Ultimate Fallout, of course, issue 4, issue 3. Then to the Hawkeye mini. Carrie Andrews doing art there as well just like on the Ultimates, which is the cover of this dust jacket, him doing Thor, Iron Man, Spider-Woman, Captain Britain, Falcon, who plays a role in that main story, the Hulk, Reed Richards, Zorn, and Hawkeye. And then you got some variants here at the end. J. Scott Campbell, Marco Jajevic, this crazy 125 ratio for Ultimate Fallout 4, crazy expensive. Neil Adams variants, Adam Kubert. So I guess they packed them all in the back to include like the regular covers next to the variants. There's some sketch designs, some inks. And then there's a script here for Ultimate Comics, Hawkeye issue one. And that's the Omni. Real quick, this one is brought to you by ThatSpidermanBooth.com. Their February monthly subscription box is live. Not only do you get five comics, $100 of retail value for just 50 bucks, but you're going to get two additional comics this month. They teamed up with my boy Comic Tom and Fire Guy Ryan for their crash down issue number one, the Gerald Perel variant. The regular Virgin and Foil are all limited to 100 copies, and there are only 10 medals. Everyone who subscribes to the box is going to get that regular edition, and then it's going to be a mystery on whether or not you get the virgin the foil or the metal swing on over to that spider-man booth.com and sign up for that subscription box today all right so like i said during the overhead shots i really dug the four issue thor and hawkeye mini series but i felt like i was thrown into this big event that i wasn't really ready for getting into the ultimates one through twelve so it's not a book that i would recommend if you're brand new to the Ultimate Universe and you're trying to figure everything out, it acts kind of more like a companion to everything else that was going on during that time. And even myself, I've read the entire Ultimate Spider-Man stuff. I've read some of the Ultimate X-Men stuff, but back in the day, and I still felt a little bit lost. Now that could have just been me or that could have just been Hickman being Hickman. Sometimes his stuff can be a little confusing, but that's my thoughts on it. Let me know what you think about this omnibus in the comments down below. I appreciate you guys watching and stay minty fresh. Peace. Wow, nice suit. Zip it, Stanley.